Hey everybody, welcome to Bible Party Online. Once again, we're back with a special edition of Bible Party Online. I'm hoping that we only have one of these, but we might have a couple. We'll see. We're just being safe, and I think that's a good thing. And so, welcome. And I thought I'd do it, you know, this is a special one. Why don't we do it in a little bit of a different place? So I'm in my backyard on my back patio out here so just hanging out and i'm having obviously to record this beforehand so i'm recording this a little bit earlier and uh just to make sure everything goes well and so i'm glad you joined me for bible party online special edition in my backyard what's going on it's outside well we are still, though, gonna do some of the same things we normally do for Bible Party Online. And uh, again, I'm looking forward to being back in person soon for Bible Party. But for tonight, let's play a little Name That Tune. A uh, little Name That Tune that is, since I'm doing this from home, home themed. So we have a few songs that are about home. How's that sound? And so each of these songs have home in its title. So let's see if you can guess the name of this first tune. That, my friends, was Sweet Home Alabama. It's not my sweet home, but I'm sure Alabamans love their home. So Sweet Home Alabama. And our second song is kind of similar. Here it is. Sweet Home Chicago. Now I have lived in Chicago and it was a pretty sweet home, so I I, I vibe with that song pretty pretty good. It's a good blues song. Alright, and this final song is also about the same idea of home. Let's see if we can guess the name of it. All right, if you don't know the name of the song, I'm gonna give you a hint. The name of the song is the theme of this name that tune. So the name of the song is Home by Philip Phillips. Home is the name of that song. Well, thanks for playing Name That Tune with me. And why don't we open in prayer before we jump into God's word? Let's pray. 
God, thank you for this day, and thank you for the chance to have Bible Party, even online. And we uh, ask that you would help us to get back in person soon. Um, and we look forward to being back in person soon, Lord. We thank you that you are protecting us, and you are guiding us, and you are blessing us in so many ways. And we thank you for your goodness to us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, you know, if I have a sunlight kind of filtering through, it's because I have this kind of, it's called a pergola, so it's not a full roof, so sunlight's kind of filtering through, and I'm a little close to the road, so if you hear some cars, that's why. But today, we are continuing to talk about how faith is more important than looks. Faith is more important than looks. You can look good. Your life can look good. Your bank account can look good. But if you don't have faith, you're missing out. So we're going through the book of 1 Samuel, one of my favorite books in the Bible, and seeing how faith is more important than looks. Now, there was a guy named Sammy Davis Jr., who was a singer and dancer and comedian. And he could do it all. He tried living all kinds of lives because <laughs> he could do it all. He tried being a dancer. He, he tap danced. He did all kinds of dancing. He tried being a singer. Uh, he has some famous songs. I don't know if you've ever heard of the song Candyman. It goes a little bit like this, if, if I can remember. Uh, who can taste the rainbow? And I don't remember the next line. The candy man can. Oh, the candy man can. Have you ever heard that song? I'm not a very good singer, so maybe you can't uh, recognize it based on my singing. But that's a really famous song. He tried singing, tried being a singer. He tried being a cowboy. He loved, he could really draw his gun fast. And he loved being in Western movies. And he was you know, kind of a cowboy. He tried being a Broadway actor. He tried being a movie actor. He tried being a Democrat. He tried being a Republican. He tried, you know, doing all these different kinds of lives. Which raises the question, what's the best kind of life that you can live? Sammy Davis Jr. tried all kinds of lives. But what's the best life you can live? And what we're talking about this week is the fact that you cannot beat, as I switch the camera here, you cannot beat a life dedicated to God. You can't beat a life dedicated to God. I don't know if you've been talking about that in work in the mornings or in your homes in the evenings, but you can't beat a life dedicated to God. It's the best you can do. So in 1 Samuel 1, we see this. And in 1 Samuel 1, the story of a woman named Hannah is told. And Hannah, if you remember, wanted to have a family. She wanted to have children, and she just wasn't able to. So she prayed to God and asked him for a child, and God answered her prayer, gave her a son. She named him Samuel, which is who the book of 1 Samuel is named after. Just, that's the secret. So Samuel becomes really important later. But Hannah, uh, she gets this child. But she decides she's going to dedicate Samuel's life to God. Uh, I got a little weird sun going on here. Let me try and figure this out. <laughs> Samuel's life is going to be dedicated to God. And we see, you know, different people. They're, you know, doing good things. Her husband is going up and worshiping God and sacrificing to God. And he's doing all the right things. But Hannah does the best thing. She dedicates her son's life to God. It says this in 1 Samuel 1, 27 and 28. Hannah says, I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he will be given over to the Lord. She dedicates Samuel's life. So Samuel here is probably a toddler. Have you ever met a toddler? Toddlers cry. 
toddlers uh, are funny. Toddlers, you know, they need, they need a lot of care. And so Samuel is a toddler and his mom is dropping him off at the temple. And he's going to live at the temple with the priests. And he's going to learn how to be a priest. He's going to have his whole life literally dedicated to God. And because of that, when the priest who's there sees this, that Hannah's dedicating her son's life to God, he worships the Lord. He's so inspired by Hannah dedicating Samuel's life. He worships God. He's inspired. Have you ever wanted to inspire people? And I don't know if you can hear the cicadas. They're really picking up here. Have you ever wanted to inspire people? Well, you can inspire people when you have a life dedicated to God. You really can. So you can't be a life dedicated to God. But the ultimate person who dedicated their life to God is Jesus. Jesus dedicated his life, his ministry, every waking hour to the Lord. And he walked in obedience to his Father, even going to the cross for our sins. That's real dedication. He wasn't dedicated to what he wanted. He was dedicated to what God wanted. And so he went to the cross for our sins. And thank God that he did. Because through his death and resurrection, we are forgiven of our sin. We're given eternal life. We're made righteous. And we're saved. Because Jesus had his life completely dedicated to God. It's pretty cool. So we, we dedicate our lives to God. You can do that by spending your time trying to obey the Lord, seeking to learn about Him and about His Word, praying and worshiping Him. You can't beat a life dedicated to God, y'all. That's it. All right. Well, we need to write a card. And our card for this week, I thought we'd write it again to a famous actor. How does that sound? Um, and, you know, we've, we've made a return here with Bible Party Online. And the best kind of return story that I know of is Rocky. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Rocky, but in Rocky 1... Well, I don't want to give the plot away if you haven't seen it. But there are a lot of Rocky movies, and he keeps coming back. And so the actor who plays Rocky is Sylvester Stallone. So let's write to Sylvester Stallone, and we could say something like this. Dear Mr. Stallone, we love your movies and think you are a great actor. At the Brookwood community this week, we talked about how you can't beat a life dedicated to God. Remember that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and he rose from the grave. Your friends, the famous citizens of the Brookwood community. Bada boom. That's our card for the week. And y'all, I think we should do a little dance. So let's dance. Let's have some fun. Yo, este es la remezcla J. Cali, DC Barra, homie Alca <laughs> Como dice Nunca me ha faltado nada y vivo por tu amor yeah. Solo por tu gracia he vencido y aquí estoy yeah. Tú soplaste vida para yo poder seguir Ya no soy el mismo y todo te lo debo a ti
mantiene vivo Vale más que un gran mi efectivo Cada párrafo que escribo hace que tenga sentido Conociendo tu corazón gigante Se pone interesante porque tengo tantas cosas para yo poder cantar No puedo parar, tengo que alabar Me motivas a danzar, con qué ritmo si soy sal Dime más, quiero más, dame más de ti más Awesome. Good job, everybody. Well, remember, you can't beat a life dedicated to God. You can talk about that in your uh, work studios tomorrow morning, in your homes, around dinner. You can talk about that. And we are going to be online at least for this coming Sunday as well. And I'm hoping that next week we'll be back in person, but we might have to push it back another week or two. But I'm hoping next week, y'all. Uh, but this Sunday, we're going to be online at least one more time. So I will see you back here this Sunday. But before we finish, let's close in prayer. God, we thank you for your goodness and your greatness. And we pray that you would help us to dedicate our lives to serving and worshiping you. We can't beat that kind of a life. We thank you for your son and for his death on the cross and his resurrection and for the grace and forgiveness we have in him. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Y'all take care. Have a great evening. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.